Yeah. Go, Mr. Balance. What? Go. Yeah. He's talking to a girl. Get from here, Austin. No. But he's talking to another girl. So. Okay. Okay. okay, you shut up. Yeah. Oregon, I'm right. just such a good balance. How many more? Yes. Yeah, 90 yeah. cents is the end of the year. What's that? How many more? 31. 90 cents. I can't have anything extra. I don't to make it. I'm going to make an announcement in regards to track practices today. Junior high track practices being canceled for today due to poor air quality. Also, I'm going to do a high school track, girls' push and push to the wrestling deck for track practice and team high boys. Push and push and push and push and push and push and <laughs> we took that with the I'm pretty sure I still have the one You, it's not in there, it's not in there. Take like what? Ten minutes? No. Several of you guys have been gone and missed a day or two here, so we're going to quick review. Uh, Monday, we went through sponges. Almost everybody was here yet. Okay, do you remember how many true tissue layers sponges have? Zero. 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 Right. No true tissue layers. Okay. Uh, yesterday, we went through Nigerians. If you did your homework, which Quite a few of you did, even if you weren't here. How many tissue layers do Nigerians have? Two. Two. Yes. Do you remember what they were? Doesn't most things have the uh, nope. gas? No, almost everything from today on will have three. Right. Epidermis. Epidermis and, and gas. Very good. Epidermis and gas dermis. You will see those two things on your test. They will show back up in the next week sometime, probably. What I would mention is that. Five. I heard it just yesterday. Okay. Uh, so, Nigerians are jellyfish, coral, sea anemones, hydras, um, and they have some special structures on them called nematocysts or nidocytes. A hydra is a freshwater, freshwater Nigerian. It's kind of base shaped a little bit like a uh, sea anemone, but it can tumble and move. It bends over and just flips. It's like a slip Yeah. So, um, what are those nidocytes? What do they do? What do nidocytes do? Yeah, what does it mean? What are the nidocytes? The C N is the C is silent. They see at night. Nope. Oh. Yeah, when they sting. rush against the... Yeah, they sting. Yeah. They're, they're stinging cells. cells. They literally need stinging cells. And so they're on the tentacles. And they, what were you saying? They rush against it. Yep. As the action works. Yep. So the Nigerians, or the first group, the sponges didn't have a nervous system at all. The Nigerians have a very simple nervous system called a nerve net. Um, they're interconnected, but there's no brain. Okay, so... Um, when you brush past this filament and you happen to touch it, it releases the nidocyte and that's what stings you. And you saw some of you guys over here looked at some of the pictures of people that got stung by jellyfish, left some pretty good scarring. Wow, um, that's that one jellyfish. Really? Yeah, wow. I stepped on one once and it hurt, but I think it was dying. It looked very totally It hurt. Yeah, it, it burned. It like goes. Um, I stepped on it and went up my leg. Like it worked for like hours. Uh, okay, so we're moving on from Nigerians, two, two uh, layers, two tissue layers, to now we're going to go into flatworms. The name of this group is called platyhelminthes. 
Helminthes means worms. Like if you take a dewormer, it's an anti-helminthic. That's what you would give to your dogs, um, horses. Suppose humans can take anti-helminthics if they needed to, which pretty soon you'll see why you might need to. Okay. Um, these worms get a bad reputation because most of them are free living, which means they're not parasites. They don't cause diseases, stuff like that. Like these guys here, the planarians that you're going to look at. We're going to get some of these. They should be here in the middle of next week. And those are the ones that will cut. They regenerate. You can make multiples of them. Or you can like slice their head and they'll put two heads on. So they, they're kind of a cool thing. They're not parasites. They will not hurt you. In fact, we're going to watch some of them eat in a little bit. We're going to feed them egg yolk. It looks like they fed them like popcorn or something. Little pieces of popcorn. I don't know. It might be egg yolk. We just can't find it. What's that? Not like that. Tough to see. We'll use magnets. Rain orange. Rain orange. Oh, rain orange. No. They are not in the sick class. Okay. The rest of these that we'll probably put a little more focus on are the parasitic versions of these. They're the parasites. They make us sick. Okay. You have flukes, liver flukes in particular, that usually live in wet conditions, but they burrow into the human and they they go through the bloodstream and they attach to the liver. Okay? There are those. And then there are these guys, the tapeworms. <laughs> There's your intestines. They go through your stomach into your intestines and they attach there. So How do they get through that? Let's talk about that. It's good. It's your fault. Okay, so this group is pretty simple. Yeah. Are those the ones that make these foods? Yep. So I hear that in Austria, people like the back of the they didn't know how to use it for that, and they're still using this way, yep. and then they would die. We're going to talk about that too. Where's the hell? Yeah, well, that's not what I'm talking about. But don't you ever get a tape for a mouth? What? Oreo. 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 It's a tape for a mouth. I don't think that actually yeah. is. If you always eat oh. Oreo with milk, and then for like a week, Stop. They're afraid to get fat. No, oh. if you stop and then like you just drink the milk and then they'll come back with you for the water. Oh okay. okay. Um these guys are pretty simple. They're more complex than the Nigerians. They have uh they call it a cerebral ganglia, which is basically just a cluster of cells in the head. It serves like a, a miniature brain. So it does process things it can learn, but it isn't as complex as like our brains are. It can learn? Yep. Um, this is the first group, and from here on out, all these organisms that we talk about, and this will show up on your test too, they have three tissue layers. Endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. An inner layer, a middle layer, and an outside layer. They're considered to be acelomates. Coelom, a coelom, is a true body cavity, like in between, we talked about it before, um, in your stomach, you have the actual stomach, and then you have a cavity in between your stomach and your abdominal wall. So you don't feel your, after your stomach churning and mixing your food because it's not directly attached. So that cavity is called the coelom. It looks funny, you can spell it this way, the coelom. These guys are acelomates. That means they do not have that cavity. But when we look at them and watch them eat, you can see how thin they are. There's no way they can have a body cavity in between. And so they're acelomates. They exhibit cephalization. This is the first time we've had organisms that actually have a head, like a head in. And they move towards that. The planarians, they look like, uh, they'll, they'll look like cartoons because they actually have eye spots um, this doesn't show up very well. Um, eye spots on the head, and that makes it look like a cartoon. They don't actually see images. Okay? <laughs> so when, when you're looking at them through a magnifying, magnifying glass, they're not looking back at you and seeing you. They're seeing 
differences in light. All that the eye spots do is detect differences in light. So you'll see that they don't like to move towards light. And if you put them under a microscope, first of all, you got to be careful so you don't burn them. Okay. Second of all, uh, they're going to try to move away from it because they don't like a lot of light. See. Yeah. Now this is obviously a, an artist rendition, but you'll see them when they on a video and they actually do look like this. Flat worms like this plumerian are bilaterally symmetrical. They have a clearly defined head and have no true segments. Their bodies are flattened from top to bottom. They are so thin that dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide can diffuse in and out of their bodies without a circulatory or respiratory system. Okay, yeah, anybody have any idea what that is? Yeah. Nope. They don't have they have an incomplete digestive tract. So they don't have an anus. Nope. That's, that's their that's their pharynx, their mouth. Oh. Hmm. They, they actually eat from this thing, which when we watch him eat, it's kind of weird because he's over here checking out this pile of food, and all of a sudden you see his mouth come out behind him, and he's sitting there sucking in, vacuuming in food behind him. Their highly branched intestine similarly enables nutrients to pass close to all of the flatworms' tissues. Planarians use their mouths to feed as well as to expel their digestive food. Flatworms have very simple nervous systems. This planarian, for example, has light sensitive eye spots that can tell which direction light is coming from. Okay. Most, a lot of these guys, these flatworms, live in the ocean. The ones we're going to get, the planarians, they live in fresh water. So it'll be kind of easy to take care of. They'll come in a little container and then we'll, we'll give them egg yolk to eat. And then we'll have to get that egg yolk back out because when you cut them up, you're not actually supposed to give them food. It puts too much stress on them for some reason. Apparently, they just eat out of them. But um, we'll cut them up and see what happens. We'll probably lose a few. So, yeah. so the pharynx is actually in their mouth. It looks like an elephant trunk. Then they have uh, a huge network of intestines. And so all the nutrients are broken down and then diffused to each individual cell. They can do that because they're so thin. We'd never be able to do that. If we have too many cells to be, we'd never get food to the end. So how long do they stay like in the I don't know, because it's a network of them. It's like a bunch of them. It's so different than ours. Okay, they do have a simple brain. And they have the ability to learn. They have the eye spots. And they can detect different, different chemicals in the water and stuff like that. They can reproduce sexually and asexually. We're going to take advantage of the asexual reproduction. <laughs> we're going to regenerate. Next group are the flukes. You guys can look up some pictures of flukes if you want. Flukes are kind of interesting because they're the first group here that uses two hosts. They'll use an intermediate host, and then they'll use their primary host. Liver flukes, the primary, or blood flukes, blood flukes, the primary host is us. How do you get that in here? Tegument. Oops. A tegument is a big... Hold on, I want to answer a different question from yours first. You said, how do they get through the, the digestive tract without getting digested? They have an outer covering called a tegument that prevents them from being digested or killed by our immune system. So did they mutate from there, or did, was they always had? I would assume it's probably an adaptation that they've gotten.
tegument. A tegument is a thick, continuous sheet of fused cells that covers the external surface of some foods and protects the foods from their host digestive and immune systems. So your taint worms will have the same thing. Because they go through the stomach and we don't digest them, and then they'll attach to the intestine. They'll let us do the work. We'll still digest our food. The problem is, instead of us taking in the nutrients, absorbing the nutrients, they're going to do it. So that's how you lose weight. So do they just keep growing? Yep. And then chunks of them break off and make new ones, or they lay eggs. Um, most loops are hermaphroditic and produce both uh, eggs and sperm cells. Um, they use an intermediate host for the little guys, and then they develop tails that can swim through water, and then they burrow in and get into our blood vessels, particularly in like water. So um, places like if you grow rice and stuff like that, you can see it right here, growing rice, they'll burrow in through the skin. And a lot of these things, a lot of these parasites have adaptations too where they, they have like a local anesthetic they secrete so it doesn't hurt when they bite or start to burrow in and you don't even notice it. It's weird. Yeah, I'm going to move on from the flu to get to tapeworms. Go ahead and look up pictures of tapeworms if you want. This is going to make you sick, then don't do that. Yeah, they they kind of look like spaghetti. They're very ugly when you look at close up pictures. If you look up in the images, I bet if you scroll down, you're going to find an old poster like what Lewis was talking about. Like an 1850s style <laughs> poster for losing weight, promoting eating tape parts. You'd have to take an anti helmet to go. You were. People are kind of eating real. No, I don't think I just did this. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, this. There should be a poster. Still for nothing. What the heck? Is, yeah. What the heck? Why are we doing this? I don't know if you can blow that up and see it a little clearer in the advertisement, but it's kind of yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah. And Tapeworm also has a, uh, a tegument. It does not have eye spots or any light detecting. Parts. Why? Why wouldn't the tapeworm have eye spots? Because there's no light in there, is that? Right on. It doesn't need them. It lives in your intestines. There's no light. So it doesn't use them. Whereas the planarians live in fresh water and, and they, can, they can detect light that way. Um, they have a scolex which attaches to the intestines, they don't actually have a mouth. They actually get the nutrients by absorption, just like our intestines do. And then they have a bunch of different sections called proglottids, and the proglottids will break off and turn into new tapeworms. Okay, so here's the proglottid, and the patch is really kind of ugly looking if you found the picture of it, like zoomed in. So, okay, here, here's one way that it can be like this type of tapeworm. It's a beef tapeworm. We're the, we're the primary host, okay? But the cows get it because they get the, the proglottids or the, the fertilized eggs that something pooped out and landed on the grass. The cows eat the grass, get it inside of them, and the new baby tapeworms are inside cysts in the meat. If we eat meat that we didn't cook thoroughly, we can then get the tapeworms inside of us, and that's how they do that. Yep. Like if you eat meat that's uncooked, like tiger meat. Yeah. Yep. So meat's for like, I don't like what it's called. So like, raw As long as it, hello. Come on in. I say. It's like, can I retake like this tomorrow? No, the nine. Uh, 
Same thing with bacteria, like E. coli, stuff like that. You cook it well enough. You know, even you when you are rare, it still has to reach a certain temperature. So it's not it's sure. right. You don't eat the color. Hmm? It's kind of Yeah, that's how you eat. Yeah. yeah. I eat that like crazy. You do? Yeah. 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 They, they use a lot, a lot of the older guys around here with like, two <laughs> crackers and yeah. Yeah. Right. Can you get some, some fish get seaworms? Fish can get other. I mean, I don't think it's seaworms. Well, I asked because seafood, you know, sushi and stuff, like you people get yeah. a lot of crap in there. I think there's other issues with that. Okay, I want to fly through this. I want you guys to get your homework so you don't have to. The life cycle of a tapeworm involves more than one host. The beef tapeworm is a good example. Tapeworms are divided into body sections called proglottids. In the human intestine, mature proglottids break off from the tapeworm and are eliminated with the host species. Each proglottid contains both male and female reproductive organs, and when mature, is almost entirely filled with fertilized eggs. The eggs burst from the proglottids and land on grass. A cow then eats the grass. The cow serves as the intermediate host for the young tapeworms. The eggs grow into cysts in the muscles of the cow. If a person eats the infected muscles, the tapeworm passes into the person. The tapeworm attaches to the inside of the person's intestine, where it grows into an adult. Egg fertilization again occurs, completing the life cycle. Okay. Um, if you find the 34, I think it's called 34, two worksheets. It's not a file worksheet. Or 44, one, sorry. Excuse me. Round the numbers is 34, two. Mark.